This video lesson corresponds with section 15.1 of your textbook on acids and bases. A little quick review, some of the properties of acids is that they are sour to taste. Um, lemon juice or vinegar are good examples of this. From a chemistry standpoint, metals uh, are re will react with acids to produce hydrogen gas. And a classic uh, example of that is hydrochloric acid and zinc will react to produce hyd hydrogen gas. This is the reaction we did where we collected the hydrogen in a balloon and then exploded the balloon. Uh, me, uh, acids will also react with metal carbonates to produce carbon dioxide gas and water. Um, you just did an example of this in your molarity lab from last week, well, last week where you reacted uh, calcium carbonate, a metal carbonate, with hydrochloric acid to produce water and carbon dioxide in addition to an aqueous salt. Uh, another Example of this is the vinegar and baking soda uh, reaction. This is uh, acetic acid, and this is sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. Acetic acid is vinegar, of course. And when you react those, you produce an awful lot of gas. That's the bubbling you see, carbon dioxide, and liquid water, and also sodium acetate. Now, bases are alkaline, uh, which is another word for a basic substance. The properties of them, they are slippery, so uh, so soap solution is a mild base. Um, the alkaline metals and alkaline earth metals are named after uh, bases because when they react with water, they form a base. The example of this is uh, sodium, an alkaline metal thrown into water will produce sodium hydroxide and, of course, hydrogen gas, and that's the explosion you see when the hydrogen is ignited. But alkaline earth metals will also do this. Uh, here is calcium thrown into some water. will produce hydrogen gas again, but uh, also a base, calcium hydroxide. Some more vocabulary. Uh, an indicator is a substance that changes color under different conditions. The conditions that we're particularly interested in when studying acids and bases uh, is pH. Um, and we'll learn the definition of pH later. Uh, some indicators you might be uh, familiar with is litmus paper you probably used in lower school. And a way to remember uh, litmus paper reaction is to remember the word bra. If you remember bras, you can think of blue to red is an acid. So blue litmus paper turns red in an acid, and red litmus paper turns blue in a base, RBB. Uh, the indicator we most commonly use in honors chemistry is phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is clear in color at uh, acidic or neutral pHs, but will turn bright pink, almost a magenta, in a base. Here's an example of a number of different uh, indicators that are combined to form universal indicator. You'll see some examples of this later in the week, uh, which is a combination of many different indicators, and it's different possible color, compa color combinations will tell you what pH range you are in. Uh, the other thing to remember about uh, acids and bases is that they are ionic. They are strong electrolytes. They dissociate in water and will conduct electricity. Of course, you know the reactive ions in acids or bases. In acids, it's hydrogen ion. In base, it's hydroxyl or hydroxide ions. And the relative amounts of these two ions determine whether a substance is an acid or base in water. Now, I say relative for a reason, because in all, all aqueous solutions, both of these species will exist. But some will exist at a high concentration if it's an acid, and a low concentration. Again, if it's an acid, the OH minus will be at a low concentration. Now, here's some symbology you may not be used to. You see X in brackets. X is some species. Uh, that will be determined later, but the brackets have a specific meaning in chemistry. When you see X in brackets, that means the aqueous concentration of X in moles per liter, and of course that is symbolized by capital M, mol molarity. So in uh, a situation where the aqueous concentration of the hydrogen ion is greater than the hydroxide ion, then you have an acid. Similarly, if the aqueous concentration uh, of hydroxide ion is greater than hydrogen ion, you've got a base. If they are equal, then you have a uh, situation where you have a neutral pH of 7. Now, the definition of acids and bases that we're used to working with to date uh, is called the Arrhenius model, kind of the old school definition. And we're used to seeing uh, any 
compound that adds hydrogen ion to solution as, as an acid. Any compound that adds OH minus to solution is a base. And if we look at some of our familiar acids and bases, you can see that they all have uh, hydrogen ion to donate to solution in the case of acids or uh, hydroxide ion to donate to solution in the case of bases. But that uh, definition of acids and bases runs into a problem when we talk about ammonia. Ammonia is, when dissolved in water, forms a basic solution. And if you notice from the formula of ammonia, there is no OH- to donate to solution. So how does ammonia act as a base? Well, here shown below is the uh, chemical reaction of, of ammonia when you dissolve it in water. When you do dissolve ammonia in water, it actually splits water and holds on to the hydrogen ion and forms the ammonium ion, which you're familiar with right here. And what's left behind in solution is OH minus, uh, the hydroxide ion, which forms the base. Therefore, we need to have another uh, theory or model of acids and bases. And that newer model is called the Bronsted-Lowry model of acids and bases. And it focuses on the hydrogen ion in solution. An acid is defined as anything that is a hydrogen ion donor. And a base is anything that accepts an H plus ion. So uh, as an example reaction, here is an acid, HX. When it's dissolved in water, you get uh, the, these results. You get H3O+, plus, which is known as the hydronium ion. We use that in place of H+. Plus. And you also get the, uh, the anion, X-, minus, whether it's Cl- minus or F- minus in the case of hydrochloric or hydrofluoric acid. This is also a symbol you may not be familiar with. Notice the arrows go in two directions. And that means that this reaction is an equilibrium reaction. The reaction proceeds both to the right and to the left, okay, at equal rates. So it means in equilibrium. So in this reaction shown here, there's a forward reaction. The forward reaction, HX, acts as a bronsted lowry acid because it donates H plus to solution. And the base in this case is, in fact, water. Base uh, water goes from H2O to H3O+. Plus. It accepts the H plus ion. Now, there is a reverse reaction as well. The reverse reaction goes in this direction, to the left. And in this case, you have something called a conjugate acid or a conjugate base. Whenever you see the word conjugate, it means the reverse reaction. So in the reverse reaction, H3O+, plus, the hydronium ion, is a conjugate acid because it is donating hydrogen ions to this species, HX. And similarly, X- minus is the conjugate base because it accepts the H plus ion. So in the Bronsted-Lowry model of acids and bases, you have these things called conjugate acid-base pairs. And they are substances that relate to each other by either donating or accepting a proton or a hydrogen ion. Uh, and remember, whenever you see the word conjugate, it means in the reverse direction. This down here is shown as kind of a generic acid-base uh, neutralization reaction. Uh, and in this case, you have HA. This is a donor acid, and it donates hydrogen ion to B. Now, in the reverse reaction, a minus accepts the proton, so it actually acts, A minus accepts the proton and becomes HA, the acid again, and therefore it acts as a Bronsted-Lowry conjugate base. It is accepting a proton. So under the Bronsted-Lowry acid base model, uh, here is the ammonia uh, reaction. Ammonia, in the forward reaction, accepts a proton and becomes NH4+, plus, the ammonium ion. And because it accepts a proton, it is acting as a base. But in the reverse reaction, the ammonium ion donates a proton, goes back to being NH3, and is therefore acting as a conjugate acid. Similarly, water in the forward reaction actually donates a proton and becomes OH-. minus. So water is acting as an acid. And in the reverse reaction, the hydroxyl ion, OH- minus, is acting as a conjugate base because it accepts a proton and goes back to being water. This is a summary slide that shows the Bronsted-Lowry model of the ammonia reaction. And in the forward reaction, water acts as an acid because it donates a proton 
and OH- in the reverse reaction acts as water's conjugate base because in the reverse reaction it accepts a proton and goes back to water. Here's another example of the Bronsted-Lowry model of acids and bases. This is hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid when dissolved in water. Now in the forward direction, of course, HF acts as an acid because it donates a proton and becomes F minus. In the reverse reaction, F minus is the conjugate base because it accepts a proton and goes back to HF. Water in this case, notice, acts as a base in the forward direction because it accepts a proton and becomes H3O plus. In the reverse reaction, the conjugate acid is H3O plus because it donates an H plus ion to uh, the fluorine and goes back to being water.